Good morning and welcome to DLD College London. Today I'm delighted to welcome everybody to our Careers in Finance webinar. Um, our Head of Careers and um, Business Teacher Paul Schoenenberg is here to talk you through the options that are available. Um, please do ask any questions as we go along um, using the Q&A function or the chat function and we will answer any of those questions at the end. Um, so I will hand over now to Paul and see you um, at the end, thanks. Good morning and uh, welcome to this uh, Careers in Finance uh, webinar. Uh, so my name is Paul Schoenenberg, I'm Head of Careers here at DLD College London and also teach in the Business uh, Economics Department. So, um, and additionally, I'm also a university admissions tutor here at the college, um, advising students uh, both on their university choices. And also, um, we are having uh, ever more conversations now about uh, career outcomes for students. So um, I'd like to talk uh, some detail today about um, careers um, in finance. So let's, uh, let's start off just looking at the history uh, of the uh, city. Um, I mean, uh, this... Uh, image here to some extent uh, uh, tells a thousand words. Um, this is the old stock exchange at Capel Court um, where waiters would originally water the floors to keep down the dust. You can see how um, how personable the atmosphere was there. Uh, a lot of transactions were done very much face to face uh, back in the day in the city. Um, and uh, it, it's that sort of historical context that uh, is so important uh, when we look at uh, finance today. Um, we have other milestones in the city of London. The 1980s, we saw the Big Bang uh, in 1986, which led to what we now know as the modern market. Uh, market makers, brokers and merchant banks uh, merged into what are now known as integrated investment banks. We started to see the arrival of major United States, US banks uh, in the 1980s into the city of London. Um, I've also included, included an image there of a trading floor today in the city of London, as you'll say, uh, very, very different. Um, multiple screen usage, um, uh, information technology has become an enormously important part now of uh, the financial sector and has been for some years now. Um, no conversation about careers in finance would be complete without at least some uh, discussion of the 2008 financial crisis. Um, you can see here uh, the Lehman Brothers uh, employees leaving their desks that fateful day um, as financial markets uh, collapsed. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the fallout from the, the financial crisis of uh, 2007, 2008, has been uh, substantial um, and it has taken financial markets a very, very long time um, to recover um, from that period um, when the subprime housing crisis in the United States um, then led to um, uh, further deterioration in financial markets across the globe. Um, you can see there from those graphs, um, you know, some of the timelines that were so important and associated uh, with uh, the, the 2008 financial crisis. The reason we, we like to talk about the, the crisis is because it's a little bit of a before and after scenario uh, in terms of the financial sector. Um, you fast forward to today's uh, financial sector and uh, many see that 0708 financial crisis as a, a defining moment. Um, you could argue that 2022 has brought um, other forms of crisis. Um, this is certainly not a crisis to talk about finance, because uh, there are a lot of positive things to talk about uh, in terms of financial careers. But um, equally, we need to, to look at the current context of what's actually happening at the moment. Um, we have a, um, we're just coming off the back of the COVID-19 crisis. And if you're in Asia at the moment, you're still in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis with regular lockdowns taking place across China, for example. Uh, there is a war between Ukraine and Russia, which is um, also inciting a um, uh, energy war across Europe. Um, there is a lit image there of the gas pipeline that connects Germany with Russia, which is currently effectively disabled 
And that's having all sorts of knock-on effects in the energy markets that we are seeing day in, day out uh, in people's bills rising, doubling, trebling, um, and government interventions having to be put in place. Uh, there's also a few graphs there of, of, of inflation figures. Um, you know, we've, got in, we've got inflation uh, in the United Kingdom uh, running at uh, uh, circa 10%, and, but that is not a UK phenomenon. We're seeing high inflation in many, many different countries across the globe at the moment. Uh, whether it's peaked or not is a point for economics. Um, but equally, we do know that prices are continuing to rise. They have been rising now for some time. That's putting enormous pressures um, on households uh, in this country and other countries across the globe. Um, we've also seen post-2008 a huge uh, increase in regulation in financial markets. Um, again, it's something useful to know if you're considering a career in, in the financial sector. There are actually now e enormous opportunities for um, graduates uh, to move into the regulatory side of the financial sector. So in a sense, the regulatory environment that exists has opened up potential career opportunities. Um, you will find banks across the globe, certainly across Europe, who have been recruiting heavily into risk functions now um, for 15 years. And um, these, this has been a major growth there, and it's driven by some of these major uh, regulatory frameworks that have been put in place post-2008, like BAL3, which is a capital uh, uh, requirement uh, uh, regulator, regulatory environment, Vol the Volcker Rule on proprietary trading, and Dodd-Frank. Um, so I think, you know, the, the point here is that there's increased regulation in financial markets now, post-08. That's not probably, certainly not going to stop uh, and we're going to see also career opportunities continuing to rise in the regulatory framework uh, that exists. Um, so we think about the capital markets um, and uh, whether that be buying and selling equity and uh, debt instruments, might be organizations, companies raising money um, by selling businesses to investors or borrowing money to fund operations, primary, secondary markets, investment banks uh, will involve themselves in, in primary and secondary markets. Um, and the actual participants, such as corporations, um, governments, asset managers, um, advisory services, banks and brokers. Um, it's obviously some of the usual suspects there that you will come across in terms of uh, the major banks um, and, and the brokers as well, of course. Um, so advising clients on uh, areas such as debt, equity, issuance, mergers, acquisitions, um, some of the biggest uh, banking players uh, listed there. Also, of course, major recruiters of talent uh, into the financial markets um, and, and the career opportunities available within those which we'll come on to. And then also the buy side and sell side. So we think about the buy side uh, investment funds. Um, some graduate students may wish to go into the buy side uh, as opposed to the sell side. So we think about things like pension funds, which might have a long-term approach to the markets, possibly lower levels of uh, risk, might be, for example, British telecom pension funds. Or you might have hedge funds, uh, much shorter term objectives, higher risk. And of course, the, the private wealth management sector, uh, which uh, again, substantial career opportunities for uh, within uh, those sorts of areas. Um, so we know that, you know, students do uh, aspire to work in the financial sector. And we uh, have a lot of students here at DLD College who join our programs all the way up to year 14, such as the International Foundation program with in many cases, a, a strong sort of base of finance in place already in economics which they're then building on through their time here at the college um, and uh, aspiring after university to, to, to go into the financial sector. Um, so we may see people you know, going into, for example, corporate advisory, mergers, acquisitions, um, where they may get involved in uh, everything from rights issues, uh, bonds, IPOs, um, raising, managing, financing for banks, corporate clients, um, 
financing new projects. Um, so there we have, you know, a, a couple of recent sort of major city transactions. There was the Deliveroo IPO, um, which uh, in fact wasn't the most successful IPO uh, that the city has delivered, but still valued deliver, deliver over a billion pounds. Um, and uh, in fact, it, that was one of the businesses that uh, uh, survived and you could say thrived during the uh, the COVID crisis, that their ability to deliver their product to customers quickly and safely. Um, so again, the city handled uh, that IPO and the fees associated with it. Um, you can see a rights issue there as well. The global airline industry went into turmoil during COVID, we know, where uh, major, major national airlines were, were having to, to raise finance, raise money. So KLM Air France famously raised uh, almost 2.3 billion euros with a rights issue. Again, facilitated through uh, financial institutions. Um, uh, and uh, again, these are financial institutions who, who are recruiting, who do recruit, and will need pipelines of talent uh, into the future. Um, so think about the IPO industry. And, uh, again, again, these may be uh, career paths that uh, students wish, wish to, to, to consider. Um, there's a graph there of where London sits in the IPO league tables. Um, obviously, financial sector is extremely competitive. You can see the NASDAQ, the NYSE, the New York Stock Exchange, you can see the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the Shanghai Stock Exchange, even Shenzhen. Um, and London is still well placed, though, um, as, as, as a center for initial public offerings globally. So it gives you a sense of the, the strength of the city still uh, as a financial trading center, but also for um, you know, uh, all, all the different uh, services, you could argue, that uh, banks offer. Um, so mergers and acquisitions, again, London performs uh, a lot uh, of M&A transactions, and these may be areas that students wish to uh, consider as potential career options. Uh, working with corporate finance to manage the funding of, of, of a merger uh, between two corporate entities and which instruments to, to fund with, uh, cash, equity, or debt. Um, and the due diligence that's required in order to facilitate those transactions. Um, so you can just see here um, a company like Microsoft and some of the transactions that it has or is in the process of trying to complete on. Um, and major, major uh, transactions as well that require all sorts of expertise from uh, finance professionals um, and people experienced who can uh, provide advice in these areas. And obviously, um, banks protect themselves through Chinese walls, where they uh, protect um, information between different uh, departments, such as the sales and trading side and the corporate finance side. So we see some people going into quite a wide variety of roles, might be into the research side of a financial institution, maybe analyzing companies within sectors or regions, um, could be providing recommendations. Um, some of those, uh, those uh, professionals will need uh, specific finance qualifications, such as the CFA, um, Chartered Financial Analyst qualification, and um, other, other roles uh, include things like sales and specialist research uh, sales roles, um, where you're tailing research to, to meet particular needs of a client. Um, sales trading, um, developing close working relationships with the sales and trading side, uh, provision of information, ideas, and advice to support clients. Um, and then, of course, trading itself, um, different types of trading. You can see there uh, a trader in action uh, using um, 12 computer screens simultaneously, proprietary special situation trading algorithms. So, um, so many different uh, potential roles there that might uh, sit within a financial institution. Um, global transaction services, uh, perhaps less well known, but things like custody, settlement, um, it's quite a fast growing area actually of the financial sector. And of course, technology. So we know that IT is now critical to business continuity. Um, we know that if a, 
a bank closes down through an energy shortage or whatever it might be, you've got to have contingency in place to make sure that that, that institution can keep trading and keep operating on a daily basis. So ever more investment in technology, and there are a lot of senior IT positions available in banks and other financial institutions. Uh, some may want to, to look at operations or middle office roles, um, you know, things like executing orders, maintaining records of transactions, um, compliance, might be complying with things like anti-money laundering, market abuse, conflicts of interest, insider trading. Again, these are important roles that are perhaps less well known uh, in, in financial institutions and might be roles that could be of interest to uh, students who are looking for a, more of a niche career or a specific sort of area of expertise. Um, <clears throat> so we have the different sort of uh, asset classes as well. Um, a couple of companies there, Fitch Ratings and Moody's. Um, again, uh, ratings agencies. This is a, an industry that uh, really grew uh, all the way through the 80s and 90s. Um, you could argue that it came under some uh, criticism during the credit crunch for this area of conflicts of interests. But again, the regulatory environment now has changed a lot since 2008. So um, there are ever more opportunities in, in some of those uh, rating side of, of, uh, of city institutions. Some people may not wish to go into investment uh, banking. They may wish to go into corporate or retail banking. Um, where they may assume roles such as relationship management, uh, where they, they are responsible for covering a particular sector, whether that be property, infrastructure, um, or media, telecoms. Or they might decide to go into a credit risk role where they're assessing the risk for the financial institution of dealing with a particular industry or sector or business or individual. Um, areas such as small business banking, branch services. Some of the things that Perhaps we, 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 um, we connect more with the high street, uh, which, of course, is changing uh, all the time. There's much less high street infrastructure now out there as people run apps and other technology solutions to their banking. But again, it's, it's a sector of banking that might be of, of, of interest to, to, to people. Um, again, technology, as I mentioned earlier, is becoming ever more important. Things like AI. Um, artificial intelligence, and we're seeing innovations taking place uh, across things like trading, but also general banking in terms of the use of artificial uh, intelligence. And that's not going to stop. So it's going to um, it's it's going to increase in financial services ever more, and the merging of technology, and FS financial services, and and uh, banking uh, will continue. Um, which is also sort of linked into the whole sort of fintech revolution, so financial technology, which is, again, a growing market. Uh, young people today use financial instruments very differently to, you know, the previous generation and the generation before that. If we think about the evolution from the use of checks to um, only perhaps 20 years ago through to, you know, touch payments today, um, that journey of, of, of old to new has happened actually relatively quickly. Um, and likewise, you know, we're going to see more innovative companies out there in the fintech space. I've listed a few of them there, Revolut, um, and different ways to, to, to pay as well uh, that are uh, not necessarily banking related. So it might be you know, technology firms where we've seen companies like PayPal, for example, um, grow immensely. And uh, different ways that people will interact with financial finance and financial institutions in the future. And again, these are credible career options as well for students if they're looking to go down that route. So again, it is a, in, literally an ecosystem fintech of small, medium, and now in, in effect multi-billion-pound companies um, that are controlling. You could argue some of the futuristic elements of the financial sector. And we need to be aware of them. We need to be aware of the good companies within that space and also the weaker ones. And, you know, how are these companies going to develop over the next 10, 20 years? And do they have, you know, credible career options as well for our students? So, obviously, uh, here we are educating 
uh, our students here at DLD College across A-levels, BTECs, international foundation programs. Um, and yeah, we do uh, aspire for our students to go to university. And I say as a university admissions tutor here at, at uh, DLD College, um, that is, is an aspiration that all of our students will uh, uh, complete. So either the UCAS process here in the United Kingdom or uh, another international university entrance uh, process. Um, and you know, very many and nearly all of our students will take that route. Uh, there may be a very, very small number of students who have a specific uh, career path already planned, and that might be in finance. Uh, might be we're on the doorstep of the city here, and um, there are still some routes in that in that uh, through that path. But really, generally speaking, we are seeing uh, students uh, uh, progress from our A level BTEC and IFP programs to university, and. Yeah, that's validated by the recruitment uh, methods of, of financial institutions. Bank recruit graduates from a range of academic disciplines. And again, it's important to know that banks will look at students from across disciplines. Um, yes, they will look at the class of degree um, because they will benchmark uh, graduates against each other, uh, not just on their academic performance, but on a wide range of, of parameter. They will also be looking at diversity ever more today. How diverse is their entrance into, into their organization? Are they um, adhering to diversity uh, recruitment? Um, some roles will require a numerical degree, in particular, you know, financial institutions where you need um, to develop new uh, financial products, for example. Um, so, you know, for the most part, we, we uh, are working with students who do aspire to go to university, and that is still uh, an outstanding uh, route into the financial industry. But we also are thinking very much about skills development as well. So, um, you know, uh, complementing that academic journey. So uh, the sort of skills that organizations in finance want. Well, um, you know, we do want people to develop their interpersonal skills. And so do banks. A lot of banking is about relationships. And it might be, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationships or institutional relationships. We don't go ever get away from that. So skills such as empathy, problem solving, collaboration, flexibility, critical thinking, influencing, negotiation, communication skills. Um, and people need to adjust their approach and mindset to ensure that they are equipping themselves with these skills. And we're doing very much in the college uh, here to help people uh, develop those other skills, which are going to be powerful and important to them as they uh, move into these sort of career paths. Um, working in finance, finance, you have to be prepared for criticism, judgment, or even rejection. So again, these are, these are things and you have to be, know how to come back from those if you have setbacks in the financial sector. So we look at hard skills and also soft skills. So whether you know, hard skills such as having foreign languages, which are very valuable in, in, in the financial sector, you know, specialist mathematical skills, programming skills, coding. Um, but also to balance with that, you need to be a good communicator. You need to aspire to leadership. You need to be a team worker and you need to be creative. Um, so numerical tests, verbal reasoning, psychometric tests will be involved normally in uh, financial institutions recruitment uh, process. Um, candidates will be invited to assessment centers and there may be multiple interview rounds that they have to, to, to attend. Uh, some of those might be online, but ultimately they'll be face to face. So students need to be prepared for all of these different uh, uh, recruitment processes. Um, and, and the sort of skills that, that uh, I, I've just mentioned that are going to be important. Also to be aware of which skills are declining and which are growing and how and if uh, the student has got those skills or at least some of those skills that they're going to be able to um, equip themselves with for the future. So we, we, we would think about how uh, a student would get their first job in banking. It might be through an internship. Uh, during a bachelor's degree, um, which could then potentially lead to a full-time offer. Um, we, we are still seeing people who are equipping themselves with work experience uh, that makes them very, very attractive to potential employers. So it could be internships in banks or other financial institutions. And of course that work experience does 
carry weight on a CV. Um, some students decide to specialize down, maybe after a, an undergraduate degree into maybe a, a master's in finance to give them more spe specialist um, knowledge and skills. Um, and people sh should you know, continue to intern even after they've graduated. So you know, don't exhaust as many different opportunities to get that work experience. Work experience is, is critical. Um, some students decide to apply down the road to an MBA or um, a specialist accountancy qualification, or even a, a PhD that might equip them with specific quantitative skills that might be attractive to a hedge fund or, or, or a bank. Um, we see some students who, who serve in the armed forces who apply afterwards uh, or after a period in law or management consulting. Um, and people you know, having to use their network as well. Um, you know, having, having sort of networks um, and being able to communicate with those networks is very important. And then, of course, internships and work experience. Um, as I said earlier, um, they're always going to be a, a powerful route into the financial sector. Um, and, you know, there are lots of different ways of, of getting that experience, um, but uh, always important to be able to put on your CV that you've had a period working for a financial institution, um, and whether that be a summer period or even a, a six month internship, or you might consider a sandwich degree at university where you can integrate a six or 12 month piece of work experience uh, into, um, into a degree program and then presenting that uh, uh, to, to employers uh, as part of your offering and on your CV. So um, that's a bit of a run through about careers in finance. I think we've covered quite a lot there and um, I'm going to open up uh, the room to any questions now and uh, hand back over to Rachel. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, it's such a vast industry and so many career options. Um, and also, you know, in times of turmoil that we're living through at the moment, just showing and highlighting how that generates um, work in the industry is very interesting. Um, so if anybody would like to ask Paul any questions, please do use the Q&A or the chat function. Um, one question, you, you know, the, the city is looking for people of, of diverse backgrounds um, and you talked about different subjects, but if, if you were to recommend a student um, who was looking at what choice of subjects to take, what would you um, suggest, Paul? Well, I, I think, I think you know, again, that's um, quite, quite a difficult question to answer because um, the, the truth is that financial institutions are looking for very diverse talent these days. And whilst it's tempting to say to people that you should go and study finance, and of course, we will get many candidates that decide to, um, to, to, to study subjects that align with a degree program in either business management, economics, or finance, um, there are still plenty of options out there for students that might want um, a different type of combination. Um, I talked a little bit about the risk management industry, uh, where students might decide they want to go into political risk or market risk in a financial institution, where actually it would be equally useful to have had a, a politics A-level um, or, or, or a, 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 you know, more of an arts focus um, and of course, as I also mentioned, there are lots of ways to uh, back up a, um, a non-finance degree later on with maybe a postgraduate degree or an accountancy qualification. So either an MBA or a master's in finance or obviously one of the, the, the key um, uh, accountancy uh, qualifications as well. So my, my, my advice would be that people should still go with the subjects that they really love and want to study um and uh, those those subject combinations uh, including modern languages can still be very powerful to uh, to financial institutions there are plenty of, of ways to uh, consider i said down the line more specialist qualifications that might then uh, plug any specific gaps they have in finance knowledge yeah and in fact i studied geography at university and went on to um do chartered accountancy with Deloitte's. So I think I'm yeah. an 
helpful if uh, somebody who followed a subject that I was passionate about has still yeah. got a great job in the city. Yeah, because um, it is diversity that counts as well. And, and you know, fi financial institutions are no different to anyone else. Yes, of course, they want specialist financial talent, but they also want people um, from many other different uh, backgrounds as well. Yeah. And you talked a lot about um, the soft skills. So you've got the hard skills. What's the best way for a student to demonstrate those soft skills? For an well, I think we, we integrate quite a bit of that soft skill training into a number of our programs here and through our character education side here at the college. So, um, and and of course, you know, a lot of the students at DLD and uh, and and such colleges, you know, they are interacting in in very unique environments in terms of the international student demographic. So they are very naturally acquiring some of these skills um, that may not be acquired in other environments. So I think it's, um, it's, it's things as simple as you know, taking part in CCAs, getting involved in team building activities uh, at college. You might be doing something like the Duke of Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. um, it might be just interacting with your peers on a regular basis. Um, outside of pure academics, might be getting involved in a, a sporting team where you're getting interaction with team building skills. So whatever it might be, uh, again, we know that there's lots of opportunities to to acquire those soft skills at uh, at DLD. Um, but it's very much about you've got to participate and yeah. be part of those in order to acquire those skills. Great. Thank you so much. So all about widening the horizons and really getting stuck in and building those yeah. skills. So, And as you say, lots of opportunity here at DLD College London. So yeah. thank you very much. I won't keep anybody any longer unless you've got any um, last minute questions. So thank you, Paul. That's extremely um, interesting and useful for everybody. Um, just a reminder that uh, we have recorded to today's webinar, so I will forward that to everybody who attended today. Thank you again, and um, thanks everybody for your time. Bye-bye.